everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Amy. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a white woman with brown hair and glasses. I'm a product designer in the Compute Products team, and today I'm excited to share with you my journey prototyping with Primer React. I'm going to briefly talk about why I started prototyping in the first place. I'm going to share how to get started with Primer React. And finally, I'm going to share some tips and resources I found along the way. So by the end of this session, you should feel empowered to start your own prototypes. But why should we take time to prototype our concepts anyway? First of all, directly working with the medium that the product is going to be built in helps us to better understand the constraints that we're dealing with. It also makes us better partners to our engineer peers because we now have this shared vocabulary that we can use to communicate. Finally, it streamlines the documentation process because documenting aspects like states and edge cases are self-explanatory in the prototype. So to start with the prototype, we need to create the React project. You can definitely use something like Create React App but if you're building multiple pages and working with routing, I highly recommend something like Next.js to abstract some of that complexity away. Next, we are ready to install Primer React in our project. This will install the package and its dependencies like style components. A good next step is to identify where the root of your application is located and wrap that with theme provider and base styles. Theme Provider applies the color schemes and modes to your application, and Base Style sets the baseline colors and fonts in your project. To get started using Primer Components, you can import them in your homepage or wherever page you want to add them to. In this case, I want to return a danger button. You can see what the output would look like above the code snippet, and I can specify this style by passing a variant prop with the type danger. So let's see this in action. I have VS Code open and I will install Next.js through my terminal. I want to name my project test app. And after that, you can just pick all the defaults that it recommends to you. And this will install all the dependencies. After that's done, you want to make sure that you're in the apps directory that you just created. Um, so after that's done, you can install um, the Primer React uh, package and all its dependencies. Next, you want to do some tidying up just to make sure that you are using Primer CSS and not the built-in CSS that comes with Next. So in the layout, um, page, you're just going to delete this first few lines because you won't need it. And you're also going to remove uh, this class name calling uh, the intro class. You just delete it and just save that. After that's done, you want to locate the root of your app. And in this case, this is the home page for your app. Um, and you have a bunch of code that just comes built in with Next.js. So I'm going to quickly delete that and come back in a second. So I have a clean slate here. And the first thing we want to do is import base styles and theme provider from Primer React. And this is um, the wrapper that we want to provide our app with to apply the styles. So I'm going to do that in seconds and that's done. Um, next, we want to try adding a button. So I'm going to import a button from Primer React and after this wrapper, I want to add a button with a variant danger. Notice how VS Code autofills with um, the component props that are available to you. And I'm going to add the danger text. 
oops, danger. One thing you want to add in Next.js new version, Next.js 13, is adding news client before your page. Now, if you want to see this in action, you can just say npm run dev, and this will spin up a new server in your local host. So if you see it go here, you can see your button with the primer styles applied to it. After you saw that in action, I want to talk a little bit about component props. Component props are something that you're going to be using quite intensively. So I recommend keeping the primary React docs available at all times. The props that are available to a given component are located after the examples. And in the vast, vast majority of the cases, there are multiple ways you can customize your components. One particularly useful prop that is available to you in almost every component is the system cell object or SX for short. This will enable you to apply custom overrides to the component. In the prototyping environment, where you might be exploring a new pattern, this is a very useful way to quickly experiment if something works. It's also super useful to style our box component, like you see in the image, which is primer's equivalent of a, of a div. And that's pretty much it. Um, the same principle applies to all components that you want to add to your project. You can import as many as you want to compose your pages, like you see in this example. You can also mix and match primer components with new components that you create locally to keep your code lean and readable across your pages. So having gone through the end-to-end -end experience of starting a prototype using Primer React, I actually have a few tips of things I wish I knew as I was getting started. The first tip is to use the Primer React docs at all times. There's a very good chance that the answer to your question is there and the team did a fantastic job documenting every scenario and component that you could dream of. I've definitely been guilty of trying to fix something without help, only to end up discovering the solution in the docs after a few hours. The tip number two is oddly specific, but it was a major issue I ran into while using the Next.js with the app directory. So seeing style components require runtime JavaScript, there's a few adjustments needed to make sure that it's compatible with Next.js server-side rendering. You should actually wrap your app in Primer's SSR provider and also create a global registry component to collect your style component CSS and make sure uh, it's injected at the head. This will ensure that your style sheet doesn't need to reload every time that you change a page, resulting in a more seamless transition. I want to give a major shout out to Azir for helping me figuring this one out. My final tip to you is to use React, use state, use effect and props to add more interactivity to your prototype and also to keep things leaner. For example, uh, for the runner component that you see here, I've passed a title and an optional IP and label props. Within the runner component, I can then use those props to dynamically display a title, a message for the public IP, and an optional label if those are set. This makes it incredibly easy to quickly mock up a list of runners with different values to demonstrate all the use cases. So this is actually all I have for today. I hope this helps you understand what is needed to get started with a primary React prototype. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference.